All right, I know a lot of people don't care for the steering wheel. We're looking for the factory one. Let's crank her up. Oh, that thing sounds nice. What's going on guys? So now that we have the truck out here at the shop, uh, let's take a closer look at things. This is going to be similar to some of the earliest videos that you guys used to see on my channel. I don't have my digital micrometer with me today, so I won't be able to actually check thicknesses, but I can definitely observe them and tell you what I think. So if you didn't watch the first couple of videos, this is the 1973 Ford Super Camper Special Truck. This is a one-ton truck. Evidence of that is the nine leaf springs on this truck. Okay, so the first thing I am dying to do is get underneath this truck and see what this frame looks like. Okay, so this is an eight inch section. Uh, it looks like the frame has been rhino coated or undercoated because it is definitely not a wax coating. So I imagine this is not the, uh, the factory material. Certainly not a wax coating, but it has been protected, which is really nice. And you can see some of the overspray up here as well on the body mounts. The frame thickness itself, it's actually a pretty thick material. Let me zoom in on the other side so you can see what I'm talking about. It looks to be about quarter inch thick. So the frame is certainly a thick frame. And I don't know if this was the same type of frame that was used on the F100, but I can imagine that this frame is a heavier duty. Okay, looking up front, you can see some of the bushings have been replaced. Those are certainly not OEM bushings. The shocks also appear to have been replaced. Those don't look like OEM shocks, but they don't look to be like a very high-end shock either. Overall, everything down here is in really good shape. My father said that the mufflers or the exhaust had been changed out and it looks to be a full catback system. He's gonna put a quieter exhaust on this truck. I don't see any signs of significant rust down here. Let's take a look at the carrier bearing. Looks like that, that may have been replaced at some point. Really nice. Overall, the truck just seems to be in really good shape and you can also see that it looks like this was also coated as well. So I don't believe that's the factory coating and they sprayed it everywhere under here. So I'm imagining everything under this truck was sprayed and then they just spray painted this black because unless that's dirt up there, that looks like it might be. Yeah, this is the color they originally sprayed this with and then they just painted the, the frame itself black. But yeah, the frame's pretty thick. Doesn't look like there's been any major repair work under here either. You can see the tire caddy. This is what holds the tire on the side of the truck. Very cool. Let's take a closer look under the hood. Okay, so we have the hood open. My dad's done a little bit of uh, work under here, just some repairs, some moving of wires and things like that. I know a lot of folks were asking if it was simply a fuse problem with the air conditioner, why it's not working. But it's, it's more than that because the fuse was actually melted. So replacing the fuse might be a temporary fix, but we need to find out specifically what caused the fuse to actually melt. Somebody had mentioned that the factory jack, which is right here, that the crank arm ran across the radiator. So let me see if I can locate that. I don't even know where it would clip in if it did. I'm just trying to look down here and see if, if I see anything. Let's see here. Yeah, I'm not sure where it would be. Maybe down here somewhere. I don't see any spot for a crank arm. But maybe I'm not looking in the right spot, period. I said if it were here, you figure it would be easier to see. Just like readily available, but I don't see it. So maybe somebody else does. If you see it somewhere under here, let me know because I don't see any crank arm for that jack. 
So another thing that uh, that was brought up in the comment section was the fact that this is certainly not a four-speed transmission, but a three-speed. And yes, it is a three-speed. Um, I guess my dad felt as if one time it was shifting, it shifted into a fourth gear, and that's why he mentioned that. But right after we posted the video, uh, we absolutely confirmed that what the folks said was correct. It is a three-speed transmission, automatic transmission. But overall, it's in really good shape. And, you know, we, we mentioned in the last video too that it has kind of like a 50 foot paint job which means it looks really good from 50 feet away and honestly it looks really good from 10 feet away but when you pop the hood you can definitely see where there's overspray and they didn't they didn't really do it correctly and this isn't necessarily overspray they just didn't mask over things and they just painted on top of it so this paint job was definitely made more for you know, maybe like I said, a weekend car show versus being in some type of a major show where they're looking at every possible, you know, sign that everything was done correctly. Overall, though, the truck is in really good shape, to be honest. Uh, we were also looking at these front bumper guards. They're not factory. Uh, everything we saw shows that they're not factory, but they do have these tubes running down them which we still haven't figured out specifically what those tubes are for unless they're just some type of a reinforcement tube because I don't think someone cut that away to put that in there. But they're very sturdy. It's just trying to figure out exactly what these might have been used for. The diameter on the inside of it is maybe three quarters of an inch, so it's not really big enough for like a fishing rod or a flag, maybe a flagpole. A lot of folks said these might have been used for tie downs for like canoes or kayaks. If you've seen these on any other truck, let me know, because we haven't seen any that have the hole on top like that. And again, we're pretty sure these were either a factory uh, installed aftermarket upgrade or just aftermarket in general. And something else a lot of people have been commenting on is the length of the bed. Now, if I step back a little bit, you'll see that it has a very long bed. And a lot of folks said that it is absolutely an eight and a half or even an eight and three quarter foot bed. It's not. It's eight feet. Measured it. Um, and we actually have some video footage here of when I was measuring it. But this bed is not, it's a hair over eight feet. It's maybe like eight feet, two inches. But it's definitely not an eight and a half foot bed or an eight and three quarter foot bed. Even though from the side, it looks absolutely massive. It is a huge bed. And the way they designed it on the inside is really, really interesting. So let me show you what's going on there because we really didn't show you the bed in much depth in the first couple of videos. Now, it is a heavy tailgate. Not soft opening, so all of you uh, modern truck people that have soft opening tailgates aren't going to see that on this one. Uh, let's go ahead and get this thing flipped up so you can see what it looks like as well when it's open. Okay, we're going to flip up this Tonneau Pro cover. A lot of people said that, well not a lot of people, but a few people mentioned that they don't like the way the bed cover looks. Uh, my dad wanted that on the truck, so he bought that aftermarket. They actually made a shipping mistake and they sent him the wrong one at first. but super easy to work lightweight and it gives him the bed protection that he's looking for so taking a look in the bed simply mounts with these aluminum brackets right here and then some aluminum brackets over here so this big bulge that you see right there is actually for the spare tire so you can see where it pops up and if we go to this side of it you can see that's where the spare tire lives so again the reason why the spare tires on the side of this truck isn't just because they want to be different it's because they position the axle further back on the Super Camper Special. So the Super Camper Special has the axle moved back like a foot. And because of that, they couldn't put the spare tire back here. They had to put it on the side. So looking in the bed, got your aluminum tracks here. Got that big bulge right there where the tire is. And on the inside, you actually have something that was kind of unique. They give you power connections here for your camper whenever the camper was inside. This side kind of has a normal fender, except, again, this is a double-walled side here, so this side wall is flush with the edge of the bed rail versus sinking in like you see on newer trucks. Has a nice spray and bed liner already, and this truck doesn't move at all. I mean, you hop up and down on it, it wiggles a little bit. But the suspension on this thing is super, super stiff. And a lot of people have asked me, am I going to hitch the fifth wheel up to it? Well, a couple problems there. First of all, they don't make like a direct drop-in fifth wheel hitch for this. And what I mean by that is the frame rails on this truck are not designed for a fifth wheel. So you would have to come up with something special to work with this to make sure that it's safe and done correctly. Um, now, from a uh, fifth wheel 
hitch weight perspective or a pin weight perspective, you know, I could probably put one of my big thick plastic locks down and lower the, the kingpin of the fifth wheel onto it or the goose box just to see how it impacts the suspension. Some people want to kind of take bets on how much the truck is going to squat under the weight of the fifth wheel. My gut tells me not very much because believe it or not, this truck has about a thousand pounds more payload capacity than my F450. And my F450 only squats about an inch and a half with the weight of the fifth wheel, which is 30, 3,400, 3,600 pounds, something like that. I got to go back and check what we measured it at. So throw it in the back of this truck, nine leaf springs. Yes, they're thinner leaf springs, but there's a ton of them. It looks very similar to like a chassis cap with the number of leaf springs on this thing. But you throw the fifth wheel in the back here, it's probably going to squat about an inch is my guess, but it might squat a little more. Who knows? Again, this thing's designed to be able to carry a very, very heavy slide-in truck camper. The other thing people mentioned uh, several times in the video were they liked the wheels or they hated the wheels, but they didn't think that these were the right wheels for this truck. Now, when you see it in person, they don't look bad. They give the truck kind of a, a bit of a modern flair, almost like you're, you're turning it into more of a hot rod, but they still look pretty nice because they're not huge wheels. These aren't like 22 inch wheels like you see a lot of people put on their classic vehicles. They're 16 inch wheels, I believe. They might be 17s, but... I think they're 16s. No, they're 17 inch wheels. So again, not a huge diameter wheel. They are eight lug wheels, which is indicative of it being a 350. Um, but again, you know, what we do from a wheel perspective is going to be interesting. We could put the factory steel wheels on. Um, they're relatively easy to find, but they're relatively hard to find in really good condition. So it'd be nice if someone made like an aluminum replica uh, like you see on other vehicles for this setup. That would be really nice. But you know what would be interesting? If you all found some wheels that you think would look absolutely fantastic on this truck, to copy the link, put it in the comment section, and give us some ideas of wheels that you might think will look really, really good on this truck. But I don't think these wheels look horrible. They just don't match the era of this truck. And putting a more factory-looking wheel on, I think, would look a little nicer, even though I don't think these are ugly wheels, per se. They're just not the wheel that we would probably have picked ourselves. But what are your thoughts? Again, go search for some wheels that you think would look really good. Copy the URL. Throw it in the comment section so we can see what you think would look good on this truck. We got another one uh, on tow mirrors. So I know that my father had mentioned that he wants to put the standard lower mirrors on this truck. Um, I'm a tow mirror fan, so I prefer the tow mirrors. He wants those. What do you all think? Should we stick with these tow mirrors that are on here, or should we put the uh, lower profile mirrors on this truck? And then finally, I'd love confirmation on this right here. Um, a lot of people say this was for the factory security system. It's an interesting style lock, as you can see. It's not your typical, you know, key style lock that you would see. It's more of a modern style. But people say this is the type of security system that was on this truck. So what did that security system entail? Uh, if you had this or if you know what this is specifically, please put it down in the description or in the comment section. I'd love to know um, how this thing works. Do you turn it on and does the horn blare if somebody breaks into the truck? What triggers that security system and how does it actually work? And then finally, so there are going to be a lot of upgrades that are done to this truck that aren't going to be stock. They're not going to be anywhere near stock, but they're going to be specifically for safety um, and drivability of the truck. So I had mentioned that we're going to put LED headlights in. Now, the LED headlights that we'll probably put in are going to be the, the readily available. You see them all over the place. They're available for Jeeps and all sorts of other vehicles, but it's a round replacement that has an LED ring that goes around it and a projector in the center that takes LED bulbs, and it gives you much better light output. And that's probably what we're going to put in. A lot of folks are probably going to comment when we do that that they think it looks ugly, They need we need to go back to the factory headlight. I'm sure we're going to get tons and tons of comments. But again... In an area like that, such as nighttime visibility, we're going to be very sure to make sure we can truly see the road exceptionally well in this because we don't know what conditions we may be driving this truck in at any time. You know, we want to make sure we have as much visibility as possible and newer lighting technology is superior to what was available then or even what was available, you know, 15 years ago. So we're going to try to get the most output we can from whatever headlights we put inside of this truck. But I think we covered most of the questions that people had. You know, confirmed it is a three-speed, uh, 390 cubic inch. 
Um, the toe mirrors, are we going to stick with those or are we going to go to the other low style mirrors? But if you have any other questions or if there's any things that you'd like us to go over on the truck or if you have any facts about these trucks that maybe we got wrong, please leave them in the comment section so we can uh, we can take a look at it and make a correction. Anyways, guys, uh, we're going to start knocking different things out on this truck as soon as my father gets back from his Italian vacation. And we will uh, we'll definitely start posting a lot of content on it because I know a lot of folks want to see what this thing is all about, some of the upgrades we'll be doing on it, and some of the capability this truck has. Guys, if you haven't had a chance, please take a moment, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up, and we'll talk to you again very soon.